Hey, good morning. How you guys doing? All you good YouTubers out there. I'm glad you can make it my channel. Uh, this week's video I'm doing is uh, a video that kind of pertains to the last video I did where we talked about copyright strikes, but I'm not going to do too much talking about the copyright strikes. The, uh, the point of the video that I had last week was I was trying to make a video of a slideshow rep presentation of uh, a trip I took back in 83 and uh, there's a movie set and uh, I wanted to put uh, a 30 second clip in there for to explain the exact the exact place where I was at when I was out there taking pictures and stuff and then by showing the picture itself I could show the movie clip of Henry Fonda and Paul Newman and then point out where they stood when they're filming the scene that I was at. But obviously if I dare do that uh, I would get a copyright strike so I'm gonna have to make a chintzy uh, slideshow you know, present presentation uh, for this particular video. So. Uh, I can't I have nothing I can't do nothing about it it's just the way the roots YouTube rules are uh, the next thing will be is that uh, my face is copyrighted uh, you'll be flagged <laughs> uh, it's gonna come down to that pretty soon your own face that you're making a video of is copyrighted according to YouTube <sighs> it's enough to drive you nuts anyways enough of that said uh, I guess I can bash YouTube a little bit. They don't care about me anyway. Uh, and they don't care about any of the small channels. You know, the big channels, they get all the attention. Uh, I don't know where they're getting permission to put movie, full movies and uh, video clips of movies without getting kicked off YouTube. All these big, gigantic people that got thousands and thousands of subscribers. You know, someone got a quarter of a million subscribers and they're showing their movies and you look on their description there's nothing saying they got permission there's nothing absolutely nothing so yeah enough of that said now all right uh i just want to say hello and good morning to all you guys and i'm glad you can make it and uh i'm going to show you uh back when i was i don't know my 20s 27 years old something like that back when I was in, uh, I, think I, just, I think I just got married or something. I, I don't even know if I was married. I might not have been even married yet. I'm pretty sure I was married though. But anyways, this is back in 83. And uh, I had decided that, uh, you know, I heard back in 80, 1980 that Mount St. Helens had blown up and Back here in Wisconsin, we didn't really address it like we do, we did the Twin Towers. Okay, we ne we never nobody really made a big stink about it or nothing like that. I mean, yeah, it was on the news and everything, but us younger generation, it was just more, just some more news, no big deal. It didn't affect us. So I mean, why should we even you know? So we heard it. That's it. No big deal. You know, we got a volcano that erupted. So. Enough of that. We, we don't want to hear no more. Now today, when something happens, uh, it's it's on the news 24-7, you know, or, you know, whatever media you're on, you know, YouTube's getting like that now, where if something big happens, it's, it's plastered all over, and they just don't back off. It just makes sure that every child every grown-up every old man knows every little detail about what happened 50 million times over you know and uh that's just the way it is but i'm ranting and raving but uh, anyways i thought i had a little bit of ranting and raving because of the uh, slideshow i'm going to show you is not going to take very long because i don't have a lot of pictures uh so we decided to go out there in 83 i believe it was and uh, when we went out there, was my ex-wife and I at the time, uh, just to see if, you know, it kind of interests me, you know, two years later, three years later. Yeah, three years later, 
uh, interests me. And he says, you know, we want to go out west. He says, that'd be cool to go out there and see if we can see what the Mount St. Helens uh, thing is all about. And maybe if we get lucky, we might be able to get near it enough to see the destruction that it left behind. But I didn't have any, it was my priority at that time. But we went out there and we were going to go to Oregon anyway, because I was out there searching for, you know, movie sets more than anything. But I said, you know, while we're out there, we'll ch check out see Mount St. Helens. So we did that. And when we went up to Mount St. Helens, uh, it seemed like a normal highway, you know, and three years later, like you drove right to it. And then when you got to the area, there was gravel roads and the gravel roads of course, at that time were temporary roads. And they made sure that tourists could actually drive up to the summit that quick. You know, not knowing if it's gonna endanger anybody, they figured it was over, but it wasn't over. Uh, I think, I don't know what year it was, but it blew again, but it wasn't really bad. Uh, the cone, you know, the, the summit started rebuilding itself and making a dome and then the dome blew up again and blew apart. And it was not enough to really do a lot of damage or nothing. It just made a lot of smoke, and a lot, not smoke, but a lot of uh, ash in the air again. But it was not catastrophic like it was the first time. So I don't know. I couldn't tell you exactly too much history on that part of it. When it blew, I think it blew like two, three times after we came off that mountain, after we seen the destruction. Now, while we were there, we could have been unlucky and maybe, or, you know, maybe they were, there were people there, you know, there were oh, there's tourists up there when it blew. But I think that, see, they didn't really talk about much after that. But I think it just was a, a, a vertical blast, you know, and it, did, it just didn't uh, worry anybody that was, you know, 20 miles away from it. I mean, you get, you're 20 miles away when you visit Mount St. Helens. You know, I would estimate somewhere around there, you know, and you look like you're right on top of it, you know, when you're there. But anyways, all the pictures that I've got on Mount St. Helens are pictures that uh, got ruined. Uh, they got, they, all my, a lot of my pictures from my divorce and stuff, I was able to get and they were in a garage and uh, they got kind of uh, discolored you might say but they're still clear you know the, the picture you can make it out and everything but it lost all its color you know they it had a little color but not much and I was able to restore them with the technology that I've got on my computer software now and I was able to bring the color back so when you look at the, the film you'll see that the pictures look usable you know, they're probably going to look grainy and everything else. They're not going to be real clear, but at least I brought the color back. When I first started, they were just, you know, real chintzy looking brown colors and just with a little bit of tiny uh, faint color left in them. And I guess that's all you need is just a little color and you can bring that color back out. You know, so I was real excited to do that. So, all right, I'm going to shut up and... Uh, I'm going to show you the slideshow, and I'm going to try to talk while the the film's going by, and uh, just just add a little bit of narration to it. It's not going to be a big deal, but the one I want you to watch the most is when I get to the movie set, and I'll explain that picture when I get to it, and then I'm going to explain the uh, the sometimes a great notion, you know, the movie set that we were on. Now, in the last video I did, I talked a little bit about this stuff, and uh, I'm going to just refresh your memory. If you didn't watch the whole video, maybe you didn't watch the whole video, maybe you watched the video, I don't know, maybe you didn't even see the video. I advise you to go check it out. You know, it's all about copyrights. Uh, we were out there not only doing this sometime a great notion, but we actually went to a restaurant to get a bite to eat while we were out there, and I had try I'm still trying to figure out where this movie set is and we had gotten directions but we weren't quite 100 percent sure about it so when we were driving you know we had to stop to eat and then when we went to eat we asked the guy that owned the place it was a small little restaurant 
you know, Ma Pa type town. And I believe the town was called Florence, if I remember right. And that's what gave us a clue about the movie set was in Florence. And after we talked to the guy, the guy said, you know, well, we talked to other people before that, and they said that that movie was not shot anywhere near Florence. You know, you got to go here, there, and turn here, turn there, and then that'll take you to the to the, the river that they filmed it on. So the guy said that there was in a restaurant that we were getting lunch from. He says, yeah, that they told you the right way. That's the right way to go, so you go ahead. But he says, I got another one for you. If you, you know, you want it. He said, I got, I show everybody right here on the restaurant. And he says, uh, the uh, movie was called uh, Stand By Me. Got a brain fart, couldn't think of the movie. <laughs> yeah, Stand By Me. You guys all know that movie, Stand By Me. Uh, he says, uh, that was shot on my farm. I said, wow, cool. He says, yeah, you want to see a little clip of that? So he had uh, a video clip of him walking around, you know, on the railroad track area to prove that that's the area that the movie was filmed. He was pointing out the different spots that the boys all gathered when they started the journey down the, tra the railroad tracks. And the film crew was there, and that scene was only shot. I, I, th I think they spent a day there doing that scene. And... Uh, it was pretty cool to, to hear that, and uh, he showed us on video that he had taken and uh, represented it to, you know, people that wanted to see that stuff, you know, when it came into the restaurant. So I was almost going to ask him if I could go out there and do, you know, do some uh, photos, and I said, thought myself that's inappropriate to ask that because the whole thing, the reason he's t showing us. The scene on his video that he shot was obviously he doesn't want anybody tramps around on his property, you know. So and he doesn't want to tell you the location. So that's a good thing, though. You know, you don't want people on your property and stuff like that. You have all kinds of people. I mean, that's going on right now with a lot of stuff. You know, people's privacy. You know that it, it uh, it's kind of bad. I mean, you should really ask before you go on property. You know, that's my advice. I know a lot of a lot of them don't do it. You know, they take their chance, but one of these days they're going to have uh, somebody going to turn them in, and then they're going to have the uh, state patrol or maybe the county will come out, and they're going to arrest you. And could be a stiff fine for it, and you don't want to have that. So just to get a video for YouTube, I don't think it's worth it. You know, so I would highly advise everybody, you know, get permission before you go on property. You know, I'm just trying to be a nice guy and try to save everybody out there that's doing this stuff. And, uh, and different states got different things, maybe, I don't know. But I know here in Wisconsin, you would never do that. You uh, go someplace where there was a severe accident and there's a famous person that died there and you have to go on somebody's property, you, I guarantee you the cops would be there. They'd be giving you all kinds of problems. So, all right, enough chatting. Uh, let's get on with the, the uh, short little uh, slideshow presentation I got for you. So I'll be explaining that. Okay? All right, let's get on with it. Okay, here we are at Mount St. Helens. Uh, this was taken with a uh, zoom lens. Uh, like I said uh, previously, uh, we were about 20 miles away from the summit at that time when we were up there. You know, so this is give you an idea how much that uh, mountain... Uh, was taken away. It's a whole north side. This is Mount Adams. Uh, this is the next to Mount St. Helens, which is about 35 miles away from Mount St. Helens. So I was able to zoom in and get that for where we were standing. I thought that would be kind of cool to see that because it kind of looks like Mount St. Helens in a way. This guy here is the one that did the presentation when you go up there as a tourist and uh, he does about a one hour talk about uh, what all was involved on what caused the eruption and what they all went through, the evacuation and all that stuff, you know, so he gives a pretty good story. Uh, there's my ex-wife, she's looking out at Spirit Lake and at the top you can see where the 
Mount St. Helens is at, and you can take, see how much got blown away. You know, it's just, it's just uh, incredible how much ash had fallen over so much land. This helicopter, I don't know what that was all about. I don't know if it was just a private one or if it was uh, something to do with the area. They're doing some uh, research or whatever. I really don't know. I think it was probably a private helicopter or something. Maybe giving tours. Yeah, that's probably what it was, helicopter rides. Uh, this one is probably an outhouse standing there. It looks like some pretty cheap, but it's buried. You know, quote, there's not buried as much as you'd think it would be, but uh, I'm guessing that's some kind of an outhouse or something there. Uh, it got spared. Uh, nothing wrecked it. Uh, here's a picture I just threw in there to show you what the pictures look like before I restored the color back. Uh, I thought it was pretty incredible on how much color came back on all these pictures. I'm real happy with the way it turned out. You know, so, uh, yeah, this what here, uh, yeah, there's a road that we came up to the summit area. I thought I'd take a picture of that. Uh, they're just dirt, you know, not dirt roads, but gravel roads or whatever you want to call it. You know, you can actually uh, come up there with your car. And then uh, it wasn't too bad, you know, doing that. Some of the parts were a little steep, you know, climbing, but it wasn't too bad at all with a car. Uh, yeah, Weyerhaeuser was the main per people that were the logging company that came in there. They had, uh, they owned all this property, and I couldn't get, I got back up here. This, this scene is important. Uh, those are markers left over. That was the red zone. You weren't allowed in there uh, when they had the alert going on. Uh, so that's what's, it actually survived. There's those little whatever the you know they use for the red zone but you know getting back to Weyerhaeuser they were the owners of all the land out there to you know to harvest all the trees out there and it was uh forest management they weren't going to take every single tree like you see devastated right there I mean that's a complete wipeout but they what they did is they took and they cleaned up the center of the park that we go up and visit, and you can still do it to this day, 2019, you can still go visit. It's a lot more different than it is here. Believe me, it's a shock what you'll see, how much it changed. It's just incredible. But they cleaned up the center area of where the uh, they did it themselves, thinking that they want to see the comparison of what man can do versus nature. So they kept the outside perimeters itself. And see what it would do. Now, these trees are bent over, believe it or not. These are bent over and buried in the ash. The tips were, and that's the way they, were st they stayed. And then uh, some of them popped back and broke, you know, probably later. Here's vegetation. I can't believe there's vegetation so soon, three years later. You know, they thought there would never be any vegetation. And he said that ash was actually a, a benefit to the soil. Uh, all the Farms for miles through the state of Washington said it improved their crops tremendously. The ash and they uh, thought it was going to be a real disaster trying to deal with ash for the next 10 years. Because we went out there three years after it happened. They said that uh, I 90, which we were on I 90, not 94, but I 90. He said that there's times they had to shut down the highway because the the, the ash uh, was so bad for visibility. And that's three years later. There's the road that we came up on a bus. Uh, you have to stop at a certain point and then they, you take a tour bus and the bus takes you up to the summit. And believe me, that was a scary ride because that guy was driving like a maniac. We were in the back of the bus and the back of the bus looked, you know, you, you felt like you are going to fall off the mountain. <laughs> uh, that's my ex-wife there. She's standing against it to see the size of, you know, how big the trees were. There's just thousands of those trees laying down. Just amazing. There she's on a picnic table. And uh, I think that's... Uh, part of Spirit Lake if I 
remember. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's part of Spirit Lake. A different scene of it. I thought somewhere in here we actually had a picture of the Spirit Lake. Now here uh, she's uh, standing next to the what they call the A-frame and that's a famous spot to this day and it's a pretty good shape right there that's three years later you go there now and it's it's just terrible looking you know it's just falling apart and stuff but that's ash all the way up to the where she's standing there and that's a balcony area here's one little tree standing all by itself it must have been buried and it popped back out survived it's incredible now these are all mostly Douglas firs. Now they get to be huge. I've seen them almost the size of your car. You know, the when you the front end of your car, that's the girth of them. I've seen them that big out there. This scene here is cool because this shows you where the blast zone stopped and the tree survived. Isn't that neat? Here's the out, outhouse, the famous outhouse, and that's still shown to this day, I believe. Uh, just left alone. I don't know what it really looks like today, but I, I thought I'd seen a picture on the internet that they still have that 2018. Uh, I think I've seen it. Now oh, we're at sometimes a great notion. Sorry I'm jumping in. This is very unprofessional. Uh, this is the movie house where... I wish I could point out, well, this is where uh, Paul Newman and Henry Fonda were out on the porch, and you can see he's got the cast on his arm, and you can see him standing right, right there where the black area is. And uh, they were making a deal with the Union people, and uh, the Union people took off mad, and then uh, Henry Fonda and uh, Paul Newman and the, the other uh, guys that were, you know, in the movie they were throwing dynamite out the boat <laughs> and that's the scene I wanted to show you that I was going to put in here and YouTube would not allow it this is the dock where the Union people stood and they were waiting for the guy to come back and they were throwing dynamite at him and uh, they almost tipped the boat over they had a little fishing boat with a little motor on it so yeah here's another scene of the house and it all happened right there I thought it was pretty cool because when I was out there, I felt like I was part of the movie, you know. And, uh, 1971, and I was out there in 83. So, there's quite a bit of time went by, so a lot of stuff is in bad shape. This scene here is where Paul Newman and the last son that was left, because everybody else got killed in the movie through accidents. And, uh, they said that he would never get... The Union people were watching. They were all standing up there whole bunch of them and he said he'd never make it around that bend and he did he said the rafts are going to come apart he says that he's going to lose the rafts and they'll never make it he made it fine came through and then this is a scene where he's done he's going by and he's got his uh he's got uh henry fina which is his father's arm cut off and nailed to the <laughs> to the top of the boat with his middle finger sticking out facing the Union so the Union could see see his dad because his dad got killed of course a tree a tree fell on him and, and uh, put him in the hospital and he died so folks this is it uh, for the, that's all I got for pictures so I'm sorry about that I couldn't have done it more professional I would have liked to put the uh, the, the movie clip in there but uh, I couldn't do that so I uh, really appreciate you guys watching this and uh, please subscribe to me I appreciate it if you're brand new to the channel uh, click the like button while we still got it uh, talk is that the like button is going away YouTube's going to take it away because uh, there's boycotting going on right now people are jealous of one another and they're figuring out how to boycott and put thousands and thousands of dislikes on some of these sites so it's just it's really nonsense so yeah, just uh, please uh, make some comments if you got any comments, and uh, we'll see you on the next uh, video. Thanks for watching. Bye.